Hey everybody, I'm Michael Lassard. Some of you may know me from The Contortionist, Last Chance to Reason, or my solo works. And today I'm here with Isotope to take a look at their brand new distortion engine, Trash. And I'm gonna show you how I like to use it in my vocal productions. Now, if you're interested in following along, you can get your own copy of Trash and the presets that I use in this video by going down to the link in the description. And if you enjoy videos like this one, make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's get started. The first song we're gonna do some vocal production on today is a song from my band, The Contortionist, called Return to Earth. The first thing I wanna do is take a listen to the part that we're gonna be working on and get an idea for what we might be doing with it. I'm gonna mute this dry track. I might even mute this low octave. That way you can just hear the main vocal and how it sits and what we might need to do to it. So that's the verse right there. Couple things I want to point out. This vocal take is actually done with a modified telephone. And that kind of plays into the storyline behind the concept album that this was done on. The idea is it's having this conversation with somebody who is under the influence. So there's all this space, all this kind of serene and ethereal soundscapes underneath. And that's kind of what I want to play into when I'm doing this vocal production. Wasn't technically perfect. Obviously, a little bit of reverb. Could it have been any better? So, you get that vibe. Underneath this one, I just have that vocal take just dry. Wasn't technically perfect. So, you can still hear the characteristics of that telephone microphone. And then, this other layer we have is this low octave. Wasn't technically perfect. Could it have been any better? Just to add a little bit of body to everything, so that with the main vocal sounds about how you'd imagine. Wasn't technically perfect. I think how I want to approach this is since there is so much space in between each vocal phrase, I want to try to occupy that a little bit. Now, for me, when I'm approaching vocal production, I want what's happening to be felt more than it's heard. In this case, what I want to try to do is create some layers that add to the vibe and maybe on the listener's fifth pass or 20th or 30th listen, that's when they start to hear these things pop out. And to me, that's the sign of a good production. There's these layers that are kind of hidden and felt, but they don't take away from everything that's going on. I don't want to take away from the lyrics. I don't want to take away from the drum beat. I want it all to be working together for the bigger picture. The first thing I want to do is I think I want to work with some delays to fill in that space. So let's get started there. We're going to work with this dry vocal because it's easier to work with the dry. Perfect. So let's just get the last word of that phrase. Chop that. And I'm going to do the last phrase on this next one as well. Been any better. I think. Any better. For this one, I'm going to do the last two words just to add a little bit of variance between the two. And let's use this plug-in alliance delay. Put it on stereo. Go mix 100%. Let's just do a quarter note to start. Let's turn this feedback up. Perfect. Okay, let's check it out. Perfect. It's not bad, but I want it to be even more spaced out. I really want to dig into that vibe. So let's try the half note. I'm liking that. Let's check this next phrase. I think the any might be a little too much. So let's just do the better. I like that better. So we got the delay. It's fine. Let's put some trash on it to see how that kind of adds to the vibe as well. The moment everybody's been waiting for. And we're going to loop this section. 
And then after the fact, what we're going to do is bounce this down in place, and then we can make sure the delay trail doesn't get too crazy, but it's heard for exactly the amount of time we want it to be heard for. So essentially, we have the distortion module here. Then we have Convolve. It's going to put that sound into a room, and you get to choose. You get this XY axis, and you can pick and choose between multiple distortions and multiple room sounds. So we'll start with where it's at and start looking for some stuff. Let's uh, auto gain that. I kind of like this tube drainer. Maybe something a little fuzzier. So far, I think I like the garage the best. It's just a little hairier than the others. The other thing I want to do, because this is supposed to be a vibed out section, is I want to put a low pass filter on. That way you still get a bit of the hairiness of the distortion, but it's muffled a bit and kind of blends into the background. So let's pull this down. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe even a little more. Now let's start messing with the room sounds a little bit. I'm going to do it isolated for a second so we can really hear what these are doing. I like that. That kind of adds to the hairiness. Let's see. There's a lot of options here. Let's go with texture because I want this to be a more texturized vocal production. Let me pull that over there so we can really hear what's happening with these. These are really cool. I might do the classroom projector and then... Try to find a little bit of a blend. I want to stereoize it and then add to the width. All right, now let's listen to what it sounds like in context. Let's turn this down a little bit to get a better idea what it actually sounds like once it gets to mix. Okay, that's kind of where I want it to be. Let's get the phrasing for these other delays. Okay, let's get that last worth it. What I do think will be cool for this last phrase is if we actually do use the entire phrase. Let's see, a whole note, turn the mix back up. I don't feel any and then we can adjust that cutting off before the next spot once we bounce this out. But I do want to get rid of this breath. No need for that in the delay. Let's just do some basic fades on these. Sometimes I don't even do fades on these because sometimes they'll create like a cool kind of organic, some pops and clicks in there that add more of a destructive sound, if that's what you're going for. At the end of the day with these productions, I'm doing whatever serves the song. Is it a heavy, gritty track? Is it a more spaced out, ambient track? It, what is it? And I think it's really cool to use something like trash and distortion in a setting like this. It just creates a cool soundscape. Now let's just listen through to these phrasings. <laughs> this is when you realize you need to duplicate a layer and move this one down so this is only affected by the whole note. Sometimes you get so caught up in the mix. Half note there. Let's try that again, shall we? Ooh, 
let's take it a step further. Instead of just having this be a standard delay, let's pitch shift some of these vocals, tune them to different notes, that way it's not so predictable. So let's open up Crispy Tuner. This should do the trick. I believe this is in G-sharp minor. So let's just set this. So let's try pitching these down. Wasn't technically perfect. I'm gonna take it one at a time. Let's go seven half steps or semitones. Let's do transition time. We want this to kind of sound digital. As I said at the beginning, this is like a conversation with somebody who's under the influence. So I want this to feel very otherworldly and serene. The distortion kind of adds this uh, destructive quality. And I think these pitch shifted delays will add a uh, euphoric vibe. Wasn't technically perfect. There we go. Then I might have to treat each delay and bounce them in place that way they don't slur over into the next, but I want to make sure I have that. And then in the mix, let's turn it down just a little. Okay, now let's go to this one, run it through the tuner. Maybe instead of going up with pitch this time, let's go here. See what that gives us. Could it have been any That's cool. Any right here, I'm just kind of messing with the formant just to make every delay throw kind of have its own characteristic. So now this one has a different pitch, but also the form it'll change a little bit, make it feel like it's just really kind of warping out. All right, so let's make sure we do that. Okay, so somewhere about here, I'm gonna drag this down onto here and get rid of that. Then let's shorten this to there. I'm liking where that's going so far. We've already started to create a bit of a vibe from hearing this with nothing. Wasn't technically you know, there's a lot of synth stuff going on, which helps fill the space. But then when you add this in there, Wasn't Yeah, it's really creating a vibe. It's tying these phrases together a bit. And also once this gets sent to mix and they can automate some of this stuff, because obviously you're hearing with the higher pitch on the first delay throw, it's cutting through the mix more. And then the second one, it kind of gets buried a little. Once you start doing those things, then it really starts to come to life as well. Let's get to this delay throw. Finesse it a little bit and massage it into place. But let's see what this gives us. I do like that. Let's hear that in context. Was a I dig that too. Let's bounce that. Let's drag it down to that track. Let's mute this as well. So we've been doing about a quarter note past where the next phrase starts for the fade. So let's go to there. Let's uh, take a quick listen. And part of me likes that it goes back to just being an organic delay throw of what the original line was. Now let's listen to this in context and uh, see if everything fits the way it needs to. Wasn't technically perfect. Yeah, 
I like how that goes there. Let's bounce this out. What's nice about this too is if I need to change anything or something clashes later, or the mix engineer needs something different from me, or say one of my bandmates wants something changed, I still have the original tracks and they're untouched and I can go in there and alter them however I need. So let me just organize this real quick. Half delay, whole delay. So that way I have those, I know what they are, and let's fade this in where it needs to. And then the mix engineer will obviously finesse that a little bit more if they want, but I like where that's sitting right now. This is how I would start with something like this, and you can take this for a verse, you can apply it to a chorus. There's a lot of other things we could do with this track, and Trash was able to create this cool, ambient, distorted space for these delay throws to live in. So really happy with how this turned out. So now we're gonna take a look at a track by my other band, Last Chance to Reason. This one, in terms of style, is a lot more aggressive. So it'll allow us to use trash in a more extreme way. We're gonna focus on just the screaming layer and see if we can bring this part to life a bit. So pretty spaced out like the last track. So there's a lot of room for delay throws and things of that nature. But what I first want to do is I want to duplicate this main screen. I do have a slight EQ on it just because it is as dry as dry gets. I really will never run the set. So let's put trash on here. And I think one of the really cool things that they incorporated, there's a dice icon which you can just kind of roll the dice and see what it gives you on the distortion side of things. You can do the same thing on the convolve side of things, but you can also do it through just whatever presets they have. We'll cycle through some, see if anything strikes our fancy, see if we can find a foundation to start off of. I, I will never So something in that vein. I, I will never Just something that's going to add some more grit to the scream. Something that's not going to completely distract from it, but make it sound a little more larger than life and a lot more aggressive. This sounds cool. So let's uh, let's remember this one. Amped Vox. Let's hear it one more time. I, I will never understand. I actually really like that. Let's make a mental note that is in vocal presets, amped vox. Let's try a couple other ones. Whoa, that was kind of crazy on that tail end there. Here, I'm going to chase this down real quick because inspiration has struck. I'm going to bounce this in place. Let's just call this weird tail. Let's throw a delay on this. Probably going to go half note. Let's crank this feedback up, see what it gives us. That sounds really, really cool, I think. Let's add a little bit of movement. I saw that I have this flanger up here from something I was doing earlier. We're gonna 
bounce this in place as well. Commit it. We'll call this final tail. All right. I'm going to delete that. So undo that. We're going to mute this as well. Trash tail. Okay, we're probably going to want it to end there. Let's get a little bit of a fade. Okay, very subtle, but if you hear it with the vocal. I will never run the shade. And I might fade it in a little bit too. Shade. I'm gonna make a little folder stack and this will be called Weird Tail. That way I don't have to look at a bunch of different layers. I just wanted to chase that down because I heard something cool. Didn't want to forget it. So scream dirt. There we go. Let's see what we can get going for a, a nice, strong, distorted layer that we can blend in with the main. I will never run the shade. That Nasher is pretty gnarly. Cracked Actress. This actually adds like a whole new harmonic structure. It makes it sound more like a high scream than a low scream. That's pretty cool. Let's... That's really cool, actually. Um, let's see if we can blend it between the two. Now let's see if we can get a little bit of Convolve in here. That's pretty insane. Something else we can do that we didn't really utilize in the last video is we have this multi-band we can pull out and we can really target certain frequencies. With the last one, we did the, we did the low pass filter. So it really didn't need that isolation. But with this one, we're going to try to utilize the whole frequency spectrum. So let's try to use it in this one. Oh, and another really cool thing that I didn't mention is for each multi-band you can do different distortions. So you can really, really hone in on what you're trying to do. Let's mess around with this. I definitely stumbled on that a lot faster than I thought I would. Let's just get it a little more leveled out. Let's see if we can do a different distortion for the top end. There we go. Get a little bit of that top end sizzle. I like that nasty boy under heavy. Makes sense because we're trying to make something heavy. I might not do any Convolve on this one just because we have a lot going on in the mid range. I do want to mess around with this modulation that you can use within this, which uh, this is linked to the distortion. It's also linked to the filter and you use this envelope here. Let's just kind of mess around with it, see what we can pull out of our hat. So I like that it helps it cut through the mix a little bit more on the top end. It's just that little bit extra so it doesn't sound so dry. You hear it and you're like, whoa, this, this guy sounds like a wounded mongoose or something, you know? Because my aim with these vocal productions is to make it feel larger than life. With the last one, it was in more of a subtle way. It was more ambient, drawn out, and all that. With this one, it's more aggressive, so we really want to push it. We want it to be nasty. We want it to be gnarly. We want it to be all of those things. So right now, with just the two extra layers that I've used with trash, this is kind of what we're looking at. I, I will never as opposed to I, I will never it's all about just getting that extra flavor in there so now 
I want to fill in some of this empty space that we have. You know, we have this kind of phased out warped sound that happens, but I want something a little more linked up with the vocal. So let's duplicate this, label this delay, instant delay. Let's crank this mix to 100. I'm going to mute this just to kind of hear what phrase I'm hearing in my head delaying out. Might be another instance where just that last phrase is exactly what we need. So let's do that. Let's try quarter. I do like that quarter note delay, but I'm also hearing a half note. Pull this down. Let's see how these kind of interplay together. Just adds a little bit of extra movement that just one delay wouldn't do. And now, this is where it'll get fun. I'm gonna put the instance of trash before the delay this time. I think in the last video I put it after. There's no real right or wrong way. It's another one of those distortions that actually changes the substance of the scream. It no longer sounds like a low scream again. It sounds like it's like this kind of mid-rangey, throaty scream. Which I really like. I might actually duplicate this so I can keep one that has the integrity of the low scream still in there. Let's just see. So this is what it'd be like with just the first one we started with. Add the second one in. Add that with the main vocal. Yeah, that is gnarly. All together without the instrumental. This could probably use a little bit of low end rolled off. Mix engineer could do it, but I figure I'll just uh, take the time to get it done real quick. And what's really cool about this weird tail is now it just feels like it's part of the atmosphere of those delays. Okay, now we still got this quarter note delay here. This phrase where it says spine. The last word of the phrase can go a long way. When I would send this to a mix engineer, I'd probably tell them to automate it up since this space is a little longer than the last. Now let's see what the rest of this is. What I do think would be cool for this is much like the last song, you have a set delay that's kind of happening and say you're doing the last word of each phrase. This is supposed to be the real tagline, Archons or Acolytes. Repeating that in full again really drives home the point. I might actually just give this its own track. I'm gonna pull this up here because the timing is where I want it. I just don't know if it needs an actual delay trail. Let's dig in here and see if we can get another cool distortion sound. And the great thing about Trash, as you've seen throughout all of this, I can hit random and I'm going to find a cool distortion. There's so many options. And maybe in this instance, we can just use the room sound in the convolve section. In with everything so we kind of get a better idea of the context. Let's 
see. This is in a reverb space. Let's see. Oh, what will Asylum get us? Maybe we can pull the mix down. Keep trying some random ones. I got a light. Bring in the multi band a bit. Like that, throwing a little bit of distortion on that top end. What we can do is use these previous delays to even spice up this little repeat. I might just use the word light out of this phrase. And let's see if we can just use everything we've added so far. Alright, so let's take a listen to everything we have. I think that sounds great. And there's more you could do. I mean, we could we could duplicate this scream again. And I think when I was messing around with trash, I have another preset that I had just made for myself that kind of did what the distortion layer we ended up using kind of did, which was make its own kind of overtones and create its own different type of scream. And I'll include these ones in as well with this video, even the ones that I didn't end up using. As, as you could tell, it's a little extreme, and where we ended up landing was a little more subtle. And if I were to label this, uh, I'd label it Screech, because it is very screechy. So let's hear this in context and blend it in. And... And this is so extreme. I would suggest going through and cleaning up any extra audio that's in the take that doesn't need to be used. Breaths and stuff like that because it is so drastic. And then that way it doesn't sound as messy and insane when it's in there. But even then, I don't know if I would use it for the whole main layer. Maybe like even just this one phrase here, just to give it a little extra oomph. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. I like to go to a point of an extreme and then bring it somewhere a little more practical after the fact. It's like drawing a picture. You just slowly add highlights and shadows until the picture has more dimension and depth. And what I'd probably end up doing is I would do the rest of the song and there'd be moments like you saw even with the delays, I ended up using them again later. So there'll be tricks that I'll use in the song and I'll be like, that might actually work better in the verse. It's really about trial and error and trying stuff out and seeing what works. Because generally I find the coolest things are the things that you stumble upon and then you can kind of put them in your tool belt and they become a tool that you use in your arsenal all the time. And what I love about Trash is there's so much depth to the actual plugin and there's so many things you can do between just the distortion, the room sounds, 
the modulation. Like we barely even touched the modulation. And I'm just showing you some subtle ways to use it on vocals. So imagine what you could do with other things. And I'm very happy that Isotope had me do this. And I appreciate you guys watching. I hope I taught you a little something or sparked something to help you further along your vocal production or production in general. If you like what you heard today, you can download my trash presets and use them in your sessions. Or get Trash Light free for life along with many other great free products. If you're a Logic Pro for iPad user, Trash is on the App Store, so you can check that out too if you're interested. Head over to isotope.com to pick up Trash today. You can find all of the links below. Thank you very much for watching.